piece is really frustrating me. So I bought this piece at a thrift store, and as you can see, it is jammed up. And you can tell somebody was uh, pulling on this piece pretty good. They've destroyed the hole trying to get this thing open. Looks like it was cracked. Love this piece. I'm going to have to restore it, but i to get it open first. <sighs> Stay tuned. Okay, so I have now destroyed the handle for this, which is okay. I wasn't planning on using it anyway, so let's flick that piece back in there. When I bought this piece, the woman told me that she had just had it open and that uh, it must have swelled up in the heat at the garage sale. Clearly that was a lie. There's a lot of lying going on here because this sucker feels locked. So I am now going to see, let's see. You know what I need to do? I need to get a uh, screwdriver <laughs> or something that I need to get in there and um, try and wedge this door open and see what we've got going on. But then we're gonna have to repair this hole and I'm gonna show you where my dad and I finally disagree on something. Okay, so I got the screwdriver in the side here. Finally got the door open. Did a little more damage to this right here, which we're gonna have to, we're just gonna have to pull that off. We'll have to fill that, we'll end up filling that. But let's get this door off of here, if we can. not bad in there. Well, it's got spiders in there, but uh, yeah, let's get this fixed up. I'm going to show you how to repair this properly so that um, if you have a piece where you pick it up and somebody's been wedging on it, like clearly they were trying to get this door open and they didn't know what, what to do to fix this. Uh, and they widened this hole. So, and, and instead of fixing it, they kept pulling on it and tugging on it. So we're gonna fix that up. This whole piece is gonna get a makeover, but this video in particular, I'm gonna show you just how to repair this problem. I got the door off. Um, this thing has clearly been repaired before. Not well and not right. The screws were replaced at some point with these flathead screws that are uh, clearly, clearly too big. Uh, it's been repainted. Not well. Let's see if I can get that here there got a little shade on it um, <laughs> this needs to be loved uh, this is a, a very old piece it has had a lot of life it's still got a lot of li life left this is what I do I feel very sorry for this piece of furniture this cabinet People think I'm strange because I do this all the time. I, I look at pieces like this and I feel pain for for the piece because it's a very well-made piece of furniture. It was beautiful in its day and then someone got a hold of it and just destroyed it. But if you know what you're doing, you can still bring this back to life. Um, today we're just gonna focus on this whole, we'll talk about repairing this piece and the rest of it. The legs look like a wolverine has chewed on it. I'm not lying. Like seriously, I don't know what they were thinking, but um, they just painted over what looks like it's been chewed on. So I'm gonna show you how to repair that in a later video. Make sure you click the subscribe button and don't forget to click the bell icon so you can be notified so you can see how this piece comes back together. Um, there's a lot of life left in this. I'm gonna love it. I'm gonna love it back to a state where somebody else is gonna see it and they're gonna know what a great piece of furniture this really is. And uh, this was destined for a landfill. I picked it up at a garage sale for $5, uh, but the lady was moving and anything that 
didn't get sold was going to go in the trash. So this could have ended up in a landfill and it didn't need to. It is solid wood. It's not pressed plywood. I mean, you can see right there, it is a good quality piece of furniture. I'm going to fix this and this piece is going to find a new home somewhere and somebody's going to love it very much. But today I'm going to show you where my dad and I disagree. Now I learned everything I know about woodworking and refinishing furniture from my dad. Growing up, um, he rescued things from the landfill and put them together and, and repaired them. I remember watching him work on multiple projects and helping him with some of the projects. There's a piano in my living room upstairs that him and I worked on over one summer. Um, and I, I still love it to this day. I'm never ever gonna get rid of it. And I don't even play piano. My sister does. She can't have it back. It's mine. I worked really hard on that piece and I love it and I'm keeping it. Repair is a bit of a controversy between me and my dad. Now he's taught me everything I know and, and we don't typically disagree on things on how to do repairs. This is one place where, I'm sorry dad, I disagree. <laughs> He, uh, he said, why are you doing it that way? When I told him what I was going to do to fix this handle. And, and I said, well, I feel like this is a better repair. And our paths diverged in a wood. There's my literary background. If you didn't know I write mysteries, I write mysteries. Well, there's my literary side coming through. We <laughs> came upon a path. We diverged. We I took the path less traveled, Dad. So this is the path less traveled. Let me get my uh, equipment ready. And I'm going to show you what I do to fix this. Okay, kids, there's no good way for me to film this, so I'm going to try and show you. So here's what you need. A scrap piece of cardboard, and I like this. It is JB Weld um, resin, epoxy. Uh, this is what I use to fill the hole. I think it creates like a super hard surface. I'm able to drill through it. I'm able to sand it. What my dad would do... And this is what I do to, to fill hinges too. And ignore the fact that I have an unfinished basement behind me. I gotta work inside today because the smoke from the fire, wildfires is just too bad. I can't, you can smell it so bad. But anywho, um, I, I would normally do this to fix things like hinges and things like that, but he would do, what he was saying was he'd get a piece of like a wooden dowel and some wood glue and stick the dowel in there and then just drill it out that way. I don't prefer that for a handle because um, when you cut the dowel off, you don't get a really smooth surface. You end up having to sand it uh, with the, and I mean, sometimes it still doesn't get like super flat and uh, it just doesn't hold up, I don't think as well. I like the resin. I think it holds up beautifully. It, I can drill through it. It when I when I wipe it off and I'll show you, it's like it was never even there. I mean, you paint, you can paint over it, you can drill through it. It's hard as a rock. It's it's just wonderful. I, it's a way to strengthen that hole, to make sure that you know when you're tugging on the next person that starts tugging on this thing is not going to make that hole bigger. It's not going to break apart. It's not going to pull out like a plug it's going to be part of the furniture. So this is what I'm going to do. Get a scrap piece of cardboard. Get your two parts. So we've got the hardener on the one side and the resin and you're going to do equal parts of hardener and resin and then a stick to mix it with. I just grabbed a paint stick because I have them on hand. So you're going to, you're going to put it on the cardboard and mix it up with your paint. Okay. So now we've got what I do is I'll just take a line of the resin. And this stuff stinks, so please make sure you work in a well-ventilated area. I am not lying, y'all. This stinks. Ignore the inventory back here. That is inventory. And an old ladder tossed on top. I know it's a hot mess. Oh, the hardener. It's a little gooey. And then to make sure, this is the part that stinks. It smells like a perm, ladies. If you're out there and you know what a perm smells like, yeah, this smells like a perm. So make sure you're working in a well-ventilated area. I just take and I do a little line next to it, about the same. 
so that I can try and keep it as equal parts. I like epoxy resin. I use it to, not, not this particular wood filler epoxy resin, but I use it to um, adhere things all the time that I want to make sure stay permanently. So it's, it's just wonderful. It's as hard as a rock. I got turned on to it by my husband who's like, why don't you use epoxy? Aside from the fact that it stinks terribly, it's wonderful. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it and put it on the edge of my stick. And then I'm going to fill that hole. You basically butter it into that hole. And you know what? I'm going to use the best tool known to man, my finger. I'm going to get it in there. Can't be shy about getting epoxy on you. Flip it over. This side, as you can tell, has really been gouged out. Make sure that gets in there. I may have to mix up some more. This side is wider than I think. And just basically butter that right in there. Again, the finger. I get in trouble because uh, I will get epoxy on my fingers. I will get uh, wood glue. I get paint. I, I have so much stuff. I probably should not use my finger, but it's just the best tool ever. Yeah, and it's starting to fill that hole. I'm gonna have to do a little more. It literally dipped down into that hole. So as you can see, it slid down in there, which is good. Equal parts again. Just gonna do a little more, get it in there. quickly because it's going to harden pretty quick. I don't actually know how long it takes to harden because I usually let it sit overnight. I'm not in too much of a hurry. I want this to be as what I'm doing here is I'm pushing this down flat to make sure it goes in that hole and then I'm going to scrape it with the edge of my stick. Literally, it's like leveling off when you're baking. So I'm pushing it down. And this is just my method. You could probably come up with a different method. And then I take this at an angle and slide it across. Ugh, it's literally falling through here. I'm pushing it back out the other side. What I'm going to do is... something on the back side. I've got a scrap piece of wood here and I'm going to place underneath here just to make sure all my resin doesn't slide out as I'm pushing it through because it's wanting to go through the back of this piece. Yeah, I should have thought of that. that like it is. I don't want to keep pushing on it. And then I'm going to let this dry. I may have to come back in here with uh, some more. I'm going to clean up the edges here just because I'm lazy and I don't love sanding all this off. And I'm going to let that harden up for a little bit. You can see, cleaned off the edges. And then I will take a palm sander or a belt sander to that and uh, get it leveled off. And I may need to add a little more in there. This will literally become hard as a rock, this, this piece that I put in there. And I'll be able to drill a new hole for the handle. And then we'll come back in a later video and we will clean up 
all the damage that's been done to this piece. I pulled this off because there was no other way to get this sucker open. She lied. Um, but you can see there's damage on this corner. We'll have to repair that. And I'll show you uh, some of my preferred methods for doing that. And then I'm gonna show you how to fix that foot that looks like it's been chewed on by a Wolverine. You can make that pretty again, people. So stay tuned. I will show you what happens with this piece. Okay, back in the unfinished basement. So um, this thing is dry, no lie. So, oh, bad light. This light is so weird because it says it's white, but it, every time I put white up, I see like multiple colors on the white. So anyway, but you can see it is dry. It is literally hard as a rock. There's no way if you drill a hole in this, it's drillable, it's sandable, it's paintable. If you drill a hole in this, it's not gonna pull out like a cork. So remember how this was wiggling back and forth? I'm gonna drill a hole in this and show you how sturdy this is now. So unlike filling it with a piece of wood and some wood glue and maybe a little you know, filler, that can be, if you're tugging on a piece, it can pop out like a cork. This is not gonna pop out like a cork. This stuff has literally gotten in that wood grain and it has bonded with it. It's, it is like another solid piece of wood. So I'm gonna put you on time lapse. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna drill a hole through this, show you what it looks like when it's all drilled out and the screw is through it, the, the new handle is in there. I'm not gonna sand it down. I mean, I'll show you a little bit of the sanding just so, let me just do that right now, just so you can see that this is sandable. So if you take this and you just, sand it down. I'm actually going to do this with my hand sander, not with a, a piece of sandpaper like that. But you can see that it's it's sanded down a little bit right there and the gloss has come off. So I'm gonna, screw, I'm gonna drill a hole through this and we're gonna show you what it's like when there's a new handle on there. Okay, this is the original handle that came with it. It's not gonna be what I'm gonna use when this thing is refinished, but I just wanna show you what this looks like when you get a screw through there. And I drill my hole just slightly smaller than the actual screw that I'm using. And I guess this top, this should have gone on the top, whatever. So that it's not loose at all when you start out with a new project. And that's a handy little pro tip right there. So the drill bit that I used is just slightly smaller than the actual screw. So you do have to work it in there. Would help if I had a plier or something to turn this with, but of course. I swear to God, they're gonna stick me in a home someday and I'm gonna be screaming at people, did you take my pliers or my drill bit? All right, let me go find a pliers. All right, I found a pliers and a screwdriver. So I'm gonna just use the screwdriver. And just give it a little torque, push it through. Just remember, if you have effort putting it through, it's gonna take somebody else effort to tug it off there. So it's not gonna be loose on you. On ya. I've seen people drill these holes like a little bigger and then I'm like well, it's loose again oh, loose okay so it's coming out the other side okay. I'm take this bit it's not gonna lay perfectly flat because I haven't sanded the whole thing down but I don't really want to get into sanding until I filled it and all this good stuff. But now our handle's back on. See, if I pull on this, no matter how hard I pull, I'm not going anywhere. That's how you fix this. Now, let's put this piece back on just because I have it here. I have the glue. I use Gorilla Glue. So I love this stuff. I will give you a handy little tip. Uh, check out this picture. That is uh, me wiping Gorilla Glue off the excess with my finger. I lost the ability 
to use my fingerprint sensor on my cell phone for weeks. Don't do this. This is like an old school thing. You used to be able to take regular wood glue and just wipe off the excess and I've gotten into the habit and I forgot that Gorilla Glue is actually activated by water. It actually gets stronger when you put water on it. And uh, so when I went to wash it off my hands, I like glued myself to myself and it was ugly. Don't do that. <laughs> but I've got a little water here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour it on the wood. Just wanna wet this wood a little bit. Make that damp and that's because it opens up the wood grain. So I just put a little wood there and then I have that piece that I accidentally tore off also going to get that wet and I have a little puddle here on the workbench so I'm just going to run it through the puddle. Yeah! Use up the water I got and then I'm going to see how did I pull this off? Which way did this go? This went... Put my puzzle piece back together here. There we go. I see it. Okay. Let's show you. Okay. So you see I fit my puzzle piece. This little piece up here fits right in this groove. And I'm going to put this back together and I'm going to glue this back down, which is the repair that wasn't done properly before. I'm just going to take my Gorilla Glue. Get it on there. Take it. Run a bead down here. Don't go crazy because this is going to spread out when you put it back together. Very careful. If you've never used this before, I am not joking. Glued myself together. Epic fail moment. I'm going to line the pieces up. As best I can. I am going to have to use some wood filler because this was damaged when I purchased the piece. So we will end up fixing that later, but I'm going to glue this down. I have a clamp here. I'm going to clamp this down and I'm actually going to put a piece of board over the top. It may glue it down, it may not. Ah, this is too thick. Fiffle. I'm going to cuss on you, but still that doesn't make me happy. Alright, I'm going to use what I got. I'm going to just do what I got here. Reline that up. Shifted it a little bit, so we're gonna shift it back into place. I am getting glue on my hands. <laughs> it's inevitable. I will at some point glue myself shut. And for those of you who are about to write in the comments, start with your mouth. Shut up. Okay. So I've glamp. I've glamped. I'm going glamping later. I've clamped this down into place. This isn't gonna go anywhere. I'll put a weight on this end just so that the piece that I didn't get a clamp down on here will stay down. And then, that's all there is for this piece for now. So now you know how to fix that handle problem. So don't ever let me see you do that again. <laughs> just get some wood putty, fill it, sand it, screw, drill it. You know put your put your new handle in there and make it nice safe and secure because you won't regret it there there's no point to keep tugging on that and making that hole bigger it's just gonna make the problem worse and it is a simple simple fix especially if you're gonna paint a piece so you know between that and the gorilla glue and wood filler you know please subscribe to the channel because I am going to complete this entire piece, this entire cabinet in different sections. So you will see me do all the wood filling. We're going to sand it. We're going to repair those legs that look like they were chewed on by a Wolverine. So please subscribe to the channel. Click the bell icon to be notified about future videos because you're going to want to see how this turns out because I think she's going to be pretty. She's a pretty stable piece and I think in the end it's going to be worth the effort. So, yeah, stay with me. Happy junkin', everyone. Visit my blog, peonylanedesigns.com, for more tips, tricks, and inspiration. Thanks for watching, everyone. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon so you'll be notified of new videos. I post every week, 
DIY tutorials, and of course, more Junkin videos.